Hi, welcome to Air Called Anything. Another instalment of the Builder's Choice engine kit from CB Performance that I now have the short block built and I'm moving on to the long block. So that's putting on the pistons, the cylinders and the heads. But before I can button that all down, just bolt it all on, I can't do that. I've got to do stuff like sort out the geometry and uh, cut the push rods to length and all this sort of stuff. The first thing I'm going to do though, is I'm going to look at the compression ratio. So there's lots of, uh, there's a formula to do that, but there's lots of websites online who allow you just to put in the details and it works out your compression ratio for you. So the details you need are the stroke of the crank, 7.84 uh, millimeters, the bore of the, of the pistons, the deck height, which is the distance from the top of the cylinder to the top top of the piston, a top dead center, and the CC of the heads. So CB in the spec for this, it's a kit, so it's, they've already spec'd it out. The spec is 8.7 to 1. A stock motor, 1600 stock motor runs about 7.5, 7.6 or something in that sort of region, I think. Uh, and you can, some guys run up to like close to 10 or at 10. And it's a lot more complicated than that because that's your static compression. Um, the amount of change in volume from the bottom of the stroke to the very top of the stroke. But the inlet valve opens and closes during that. It doesn't actually, it's actually still, the inlet valve is still closing as the piston is moving up towards top dead center. So the actual dynamic uh, compression is, is very, very different. So I'm not, that's obviously all been taken into consideration with this kit and I'm not gonna calculate that and I wouldn't even know how to start calculating the dynamic compression. I just don't know how you do that. So I'm just gonna look and see if I'm near 8.7 to one on the compression ratio, which is what they recommend. If it's wildly below, then um, that's cause uh, for concern. Maybe I'll have to get the cylinders milled down so that I can reduce the deck height. If it's wildly above, then I should consider running a, sh a shim underneath the cylinder. But if it's roughly, you know, 8.5 to 8.9, then I'm in the ballpark. I'm not after a wildly powerful motor with like loads of compression. Uh, it's just got to be strong and lots of torque um, and at lo at lower revs to move my bus forward so I can drive it on the motorway safely. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the cc's on the head. So to find out the cc of the heads we're looking to measure this kidney shaped area here and it should be roughly the same for all four combustion chambers. We've got both the heads out these are the Panchito heads. What does it say on them? There you go. Just there, Panchito 044 CB. Now this, the heads are obviously a really important part of the engine. Um, a good set of heads makes a huge difference. So these have all got brand new valves, valve guides, brand new, new springs, all beautiful. So you know, I put a couple of bits of wood on the workbench just so that when I put the, the heads down, they stay flat. Now, if to measure the CC, you need one of these CC kits. So you get a bunch of discs all for different bore sizes. If you want the 19 and a half, which just goes in the head like that, hole in the top. We seal it down, fill it up with water, make sure there's no air inside. And then using the syringe that comes with the kit, we calculate how many cc's is in the head and then we write it down. Now, if we're gonna put water in there now, is this gonna fall out So <clears throat> through the spark plug hole? So if I flip them over, we'll do number one first. Um, got a brand new set of spark plugs. These are like a long reach, very skinny thread on these, really tiny little spark plugs, not like the stock ones at all. So we'll just screw that in. Nip it down. Not too much. Stand it up. Now to seal the disc, I'm using the blue one. I'll put those back in the packet. To seal the disc, I'm just going to use some Molly Lube. 
You can use um, Vaseline or anything that will make a good seal. Now I've got molly lube all over my hands. Ugh. Bit more than that. Vaseline's going to be cheaper, obviously. Cheaper way to do it. I made a right mess of that, didn't I? And I don't want that messing with our CC reading, so I'm just going to wipe off any excess around the middle. And then we pop it in. Press it down. And see that's made a nice sealing surface. Going to fill the syringe to 60 cc's. And I'm going to make a better job than that. Turn it upside down to get any air out of it. Make sure there's no air in it. There we go. That is exactly C uh, 60 cc's. And then we carefully fill our chamber up. You want to fill it so the water goes to the bottom of the hole. It's got an air bubble in there. Partly come out. Bit more. There we go. Then we look where we are, and we are on six. So that's fifty four CCs. And as simple as that. So I always write, well, what you do is you write 54 cc's. So I'm going to do number two now. I've already got the disc in. And so I thought it might be beneficial to see a closer up shot of the procedure. So just squeezing the water in. I can go a bit quicker on this one because I know roughly where it's going to come out to be, you hope. Very nearly there. And you see it does that, it goes boink. And then I have an air bubble here, so if I tip it this way, you can get some of the air out, like that. So the air bubble's right splat bang in the middle now, so this will be easy just to fill it up. Until that air bubble completely goes. Nearly gone. Smidgen more. There you go. Easy peasy. So there's the syringe. It is on, if you're looking at 0 through to 10, there's the 5 mark and it's on 6. So that makes it 54 cc's. Same as number 1, which is good to see. Both heads coming out at 54 cc. I've got, I haven't even looked at the spec sheet, I've got no idea what they're supposed to be, so I should imagine 54cc. I'll do the other head, so the number three and four, and I'll report back with what I find there. I imagine it's going to be the same, or you hope so. Three and four combustion chambers came out exactly the same. 54cc and 54cc. So all four combustion chambers are 54cc which is pretty much as advertised. I looked it up on the CB website and the Panchito heads, these Panchito heads, um, the new ones, it says the new ones are 57cc and anything made prior 
to the 22nd of was it August 2019 are 54. So I guess these are old older ones. So they're flogging off the old. I mean, I bought this in 2020, a year after the new ones came out. So I guess they're flogging off their old stock in the kits. Um, but as long as the compression ratio is all good and it hits the 2017cc, then we're we're um, cooking on gas. I guess they save these ones back for the 2017cc uh, uh, motors because if it was uh, 57s, that's an extra 12. Um, so that would be um, 17, 2023 uh, cc rather than 17. So happy with that. Next thing to do, just put the heads away for the minute. We are going to measure the deck height. And I will measure the deck height on all four, but we're just gonna look in this video at number one, uh, maybe number two. Um, there's no point you looking at me doing all four of them. So it's gonna measure number one to start with, which means I have to put the uh, head studs onto the, onto the case. And I will be putting those on for the last time. Now the case, the short block's made. So I'll be putting those on with a red Loctite. And then I will be putting the piston on, using a piston compression tool to compress the rings, slide the jug on. Then I'll put my plate on and my head, um, where is it? Put it around here somewhere. Deck height tool which is in this baggie. You, if you watch the uh, cam dialing in video, then you'll have seen that before. And then I will use my vernier calipers, not the bolts, to measure the deck height. When it comes to the head studs, there's three lengths. I'll just pop these out. There is a short one, a medium one, and a long one. Along The long ones go along the bottom of all the cylinders when the engine's right way up the bottom row are all the long ones then the, on the top row the outside and the medium and the two inside are the shorter ones you see i've just shoved some paper towel in all the orifices so that i don't drop a nut down there um i'm going to put some blue loctite on these just to make sure they never vibrate out and as far as I'm aware, I've never ever heard of anyone talking these down to a specific uh, setting. I just snug them in and when the Loctite goes off, that keeps them in place. And when you talk the heads down, the stud stretches, apparently, like an elastic band and that keeps them in place that tension so I've heard that you don't get to the bottom of the case savers but I just think why not use all of it so there you go that's in just I've not really given it much more than a little bit of a little bit of a tweak I put the light to be neat and tidy and wipe up the excess Loctite from around the base Then I can remove the other double nut and that's it. I'll just do the same on all eight and then we've already just put the pistons and cylinders on. On the flip side of the engine, on the three, four side, it's exactly the same situation. The longer, so you've got the three lengths of studs. The longer ones go along the bottom. The two shorter ones go in the middle and the medium ones go on the outside, but on these AS41 cases, and I imagine all later cases, the stud, top stud nearest to flywheel is recessed. So you just use one of the longer ones, and then that comes out the same length as a medium one. Same height. So I'll wind those in, and it'll be studs in. So there we go, head studs on both sides. When I was dialing in the cam, I marked on a piece of tape where top dead center is on the flywheel. The reason I did this was is because I had the degree wheel where the 
pulley wheel goes on the front of the engine, or the back of the engine actually really, isn't it? Here, I had the degree wheel. And I wanted to see if the mark on the degree wheel lined up perfectly well with the parting line or whether I had to put my, a new mark so I knew exactly where top dead centre was um, and for when I do my uh, rocker geometry and any other tuning issues I want. So this is a CB Performance billet aluminium pulley that looks like a stock one. It's a really nice pulley. And if you look closely, there's some timing marks on there. So we have zero, which is top dead centre, five degrees before, 10 degrees, um, 20 and 30 degrees. And also on the opposite side of the pulley, down the bottom, there's another mark so you can find top dead centre on your other pistons. And what I wanted to do was to look to see if this mark, this notch lines up with the parting line in the case. And when I get a straight edge on there, um, it matches up really, really well. So I'm very happy with that. So no extra marks put on the pulley um, and it's all working out really well there. Number one, piston and barrel on. I've got number two on as well because I'm going to be attaching the heads to calculate rocker geometry in a little bit. So killing two birds with one stone. Deck height plate on, snug down, quite tight, not torqued to spec, but down nice and snug. The crank is set at top dead center for number one. And we know where that is exactly thanks to our timing in the cam. And then I have my vernier gauge digital burner gauge and setting it to zero, plonking it on top, dropping the end down in the space there, trying to keep it as vertical as possible. Whoop, wobbled a bit. And we have 13.79. 13.79. In order to measure the deck height, I have to know the thickness of my deck height plate. So I have a micrometer, getting it in is a bit of a laugh. So I'm going to measure thickness here. Spin it over. 11.6 oh, 11.6 7 and a half <laughs> It's right in a half, right in a half, a bit annoying Can I tighten it down? No 11.6 5 Sorry, 11.665. 11.665. Got there in the end. I had the CB Performance engine calculator open. You can use any engine calculator. There's loads of them online. But I'm using the CB Performance one. Why not? It's one of their engines. So We have the measurement from the top of the plate to the top of the cylinder. And we also have the measurement for the plate thickness. So we take one away from the other. So we take 13.79 which is the measurement, take away the thickness of the plate, 11.665, how could we forget? So we get 2.125 measurement for the deck height. Now, I put that into the calculator, 2.125. I've also put in the engine bore, which is 19 and a half, uh, engine stroke, 78.4, deck height we've just put in, and then the CC, of the combustion chamber which is 54 and then we hit the calculate for compression and we get 8.5 for number one so that's not bad 8.5 the spec that comes with the engine is saying 8.7 so it's a little bit lower and i guess that's better to be on the safer side but uh, if it come out with something like nine or nine and a half, I'll be worried because I don't think it would. It's not going to last very long like that. And I don't think uh, all the components would be able to keep up with that sort of compression. So 8.5 is a very safe compression um, for this setup. I mean, the stock is 7.5, 7.6, I think. So it's a more compression than we've got on the stock engine due to the cam 
and uh, the way it's set up. Uh, I could get exactly 8.7 if I took some material off the base of the cylinders, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to send them away to a machine shop to do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy. I, I was more worried it was going to be on the high side and I was going to have to shim it out. Um, but it's pretty much within spec. I guess all cases give uh, different results. Even the manufacturing of the cylinders themselves will probably give different results. And um, we're talking about fractions of uh, millimetres here. So I'm pretty happy. Um, I am going to be putting the heads on now to mock up the rocker geometry. So whilst I've got the other... Uh, pistons and barrels mocked up. I mean, I'm not putting wrist pins in or arranging the cylinder rings or anything like that. I'm just putting them on to take measurements at the moment, just mocking it up. So whilst I'm mocking up the long block, I might as well look at the compression ratio on the other pistons and cylinders and, and I will, will report back to you. So I've been through and measured the deck height and all the other cylinders. Um, as we know, on number one, we had a compression ratio of 8.5 and the deck height was 2.125 millimetres. Number two was 8.4, number three was 8.6, number four was 8.6 with deck heights of 2.14, 1.85 and 1.985. Rounding those up to two decimal places, we get 2.1, 2.1, 1.9 and 2.0. So number three has got a higher deck height, less room between the top of the piston and the combustion chamber than the other three. Now, I've, I've never come across this before. Slightly different deck heights like this. Well, to be honest, the reason being is I only ever measured deck height on number one and I've not gone through and done the others as well. I've just assumed they're all gonna be the same. The strokes the same, uh, the, the cylinders are the same. The pistons are the same. You imagine that the deck height is going to be the same. So what I'm thinking is, this is the inaccuracy of my measurements. I haven't, I didn't actually talk down the plate to the 23 foot pounds that these chrome alloy head studs require. The reason I didn't do that because I didn't want to put unnecessarily stress, unnecessary stress on just one cylinder in in the engine case. When I talk down my heads, I put them both on and I like to go through, the, these ones for instance, talk down to 23 foot pounds and I will do the seven pre-torque in the, the initial pattern and we'll go through this later. And then I will go up to 15 and I'll use the second pattern, but I'll do, I'll alternate the sides, 15 on, on the one, two side, 15 on the three, four. Then I'll duck up to 20 and I'll do the one, two side, then I'll do the three, four side, then on the final of 23, I will do the one, two, and then the three, four. And that way you're kind of building the pressure up on the case equally on, on both sides. And I just feel that's a nicer way to do it. It's a nicer way to treat your case with a little bit of love. And why not? So I didn't talk, I just like kind of hand tightened them down. I probably got to about 10 foot pounds, 11 foot pounds, just using the calibrated arm. So maybe that's it, that's got something to do with it, or, or it's the way I'm measuring with the vernier scale dropping down in the middle, you lean one way or the other and you're gonna be a little bit out. I mean, I'm out by 0.3 of a millimeter, which is quite a lot really, isn't it? Anyway, I'm putting it down to the inaccuracies of my measuring and I'm gonna run it as it is. I mean, the other option would be um, to shim. But then you wouldn't want to shim one cylinder and then not the one next door to it, because then the heights of the, of the, surely the heights of the cylinders, one's going to be higher. And when you bolt your cylinder head on top of that, then it's not going to mate up properly. Um, and you'll get a blowout on the sides and stuff, so best to keep it as it is, that's what I say, uh, which is what I'm going to do. So it averages out, if you take all four compression ratios and you divide by four, it averages out at 8.525 to 1. So we'll say 8.5 to 1. 
So that's the compression ratio on this motor. So quite high, um, not crazy high, but quite high and looking forward to driving this thing. Anyway, so that's deck height compression ratio sorted, kind of. <laughs> Thanks for watching.